joined today by Phil Stamp, former Middlesbrough and Hearts player. Um, started his career at Middlesbrough, obviously, um, and then obviously went over to Scotland. So I'd just like to say thank you to Phil Stamp for joining me today. And we'll get started with the first question. So, no problem, Matt. Yeah. So, well, when you were growing up, what's the uh, sort of earliest memories you had as a, kid, as a kid, you know, like growing up in Teesside and what were your interests, that sort of thing? Uh, I was always, always interested in football from a very young age. Uh, it's a little bit different from, from what it is now. Obviously, the, the academies at the moment, they're, they're starting, they start from like seven-year-olds onwards. We didn't really have them as, as young kids, so we, we predominantly played grassroots, which, to be fair, I, 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 I still enjoy more, I, I probably still enjoy more doing the grassroots than I would probably be in the academies. We never went in the academies until School of Excellence 15. Uh, so all before then, it was just playing grassroots football, playing with mates. Uh, it's gone a little bit different now. It's gone, well, it's gone even from the the young kids now going in these academies at seven, eight, nine. It, they're all treated as as mini professionals to be truthful. Yeah, it's crazy now, isn't it? It's like they get sort of everything done for them now. And yeah. You know, my, my son was in the academy at Middlesbrough for a couple of years, and uh, it was a bit of a shock when he sort of got released and then just started playing again. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That, that, yeah, that's the difficult thing. I mean, that's the difficult thing for the kids now is that because they're going in at such a young age uh, and if they're in there for two, three, four years and they're released, it's the disappointment factor of going in. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of kids still. I think the kids still should be able to play grassroots football up until the John Senior School. I, I really don't see why they can't still play grassroots with the mates. Why the seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? I understand once they go into senior school, because some of these kids now are making debuts at fifteen and sixteen years old. So I understand that point of view, but it just takes the fun factor away from the kids. Uh, and I, my, my, my older son was in the academy for for, for a long time. He's from eight. He got released when he was sixteen. He never played football again. Doesn't and he still hasn't played to the day now. Football again, and it is a big, it is a big shock factor. I mean, they have got a little, a little things in place now for these kids who do get released they still look after them for 12 months I think uh, Neil Madison my new pal he's a liaison officer now for Middlesbrough uh, so it has it has changed for the better but it's, there still is a it's, it's still very very young at 7 8 to go in the academies yeah I think I said something the other day as well um, you put on one of the one of the academy kids got on the bench in the day for the borough yeah yeah he joined he, he was he's one of the first joined uh, academies uh at Darlington, uh, he, he actually signed for Sunderland actually, and Middlesbrough got him a couple of years later. Uh, but yeah, that was that was that was Bill. As I said, I mean, the, the, the Bullers youth, the youth set was brilliant, it's really, it's really, really good. Uh, we, we've done really, really well over the last probably 10 to 15 years, 10 to 15 years, bringing young kids through. We've had a bit, we stagnated a bit. This I know Dale Fry has gone through and uh, he's done, he's done really well, but we're, we're we've stagnated. A, Maybe for the last year or two, uh, we haven't had that many coming through. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I know there's a few kids at the, at the 14, 15, under 14, 15, so they like a lot. Uh, so maybe in the next year or two, we might see a couple of them coming through. Yeah, hopefully it'd be nice. Uh, so uh, when you were uh, sort of younger then, did you always have ambitions to be a footballer? Or was yeah, yeah. Career? Always. Yeah, always. Always, always, always. I joined, uh, I joined Martin Fest. Uh, Played for them for a couple of years, then I went to Cleveland Juniors and, and I stayed there. We had a very, very successful side. It was myself, Robbie Blake, who was a professional footballer, Michael Oliver. Uh, the rest of the lads all played really high standard in Northern League, uh, semi-pro. It's been a very, very good young side, which probably, which wouldn't happen now. I mean, as I said, we'd have all probably been taken up at the age of under nine and gone straight into academy. So, so we wouldn't have had the fun. We went to Spain, we played, we played Barcelona's youth team. At under fourteen, uh, so we had all that fun. And this is and this is the only thing with these academies at the moment is that it takes that, that element of it. Of it because as soon as they, they see any sort of talent, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone from grassroots. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, we we had we had a really really good. And from a young age, we always we always wanted always wanted to be play football. Always. Yeah, yeah. I think I think say that was that was uh, sort of similar to my son as well. He was playing from soon as he could really walk really, and then. Uh... Mm -hmm. well, he's at sort of 16 from the academy, but uh, he's back playing a bit now. He's playing for Scotland, yeah. so like he's, in, he's enjoying football again, so that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the most 
to part. I mean, as I said, as I said, it's, it's the amount of kids who come who go through the systems all, all across, you know, all across Europe. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's even changed even more now because when it was very, very, we used to get a lot of kids over from Ireland, like Alan Moore, uh, Graham Kavanagh, and but that went was as far as went. These kids now are coming from France, they're coming from uh, Spain, they're coming from all over. So you're not only competing with you know, the people in the UK, you're competing with people in, in Europe now. Which, so it's even more difficult now to make it, which is. It, as, as I said, it's really, really difficult now because yeah, you'll go to Middlesbrough Academies, you've got kids from all over Europe in there now, where it was predominantly British-based kids when I was younger. Yeah, yeah that's it, when it was like British or like, or like Irish. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, they've still got a big connection with Middlesbrough. They always have a good connection. There's obviously Ron Bourne who'd set it all up with Ireland. We've had, we've had quite a lot of good kids come through who've made it from over there, but they've still got a big connection uh, Middlesbrough uh, with the Irish lot. So um, when you were sort of younger then, can you remember who your first football coach was? Uh, yeah, well, well, we started with well, Frank Rush, basically. We, 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 I joined Martin uh, with Keith Sykes. That's, that's, my, my, my kids actually play for Martin now, to be some of the younger ones. Uh, my little girl plays for Tibbs, but we be 14-year-old plays for Martin. And I see Keith every Saturday, Sunday, and I, I actually live in Ackland, which is there, so he always walks. He's there every day, Keith. Honestly, he's a... He's an absolute legend. And he's he's he started all off. Uh well Keith, yeah, we started with Keith in a couple of years and I went over to Cleveland Juniors and it was Frank Rush, predominantly Frank Rush all the time. As I said, we had a fantastic team. We won virtually everything, not just not just here, but all across the country. We, we won a big tournament in which was sponsored by Reebok. Uh we went to London and played in uh, Trafalgar Square against a team for a team called Belmont, I think it was. And they had Ben Thatcher. Playing for them, uh, also dead lad centre forward play for no wall as well. We actually, we had, the, the, the prize was to uh, we went to Spain with Timmy Mallet from Wackaday, and that and that, that was the, that was the prize. We ended up playing against Barcelona's youth team uh, on New Camp, so that was it was absolutely brilliant. But yeah, as I said, I, that's all there was to do really. I mean, in them days, we, we, had, we had we had youth clubs, so that that was we had yeah, like Joe Walton's used to go be all the all ones and Joe Wallace were in there. Three or four days a week playing football. Well, that's a little bit of a sad thing now that them type of facilities aren't open for the kids at the moment. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so all we did was play football. Yeah, so sort of when you were growing up, then obviously, was it Middlesbrough you supported it as you were growing up? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I used to love Liverpool. Where the Liverpool side of the eighties was a big fan. And to be fair, my my favourite player was Ian Rush when I was a, when I was a younger kid. Really, was, I was mad for Ian Rush. Uh, we want to go and scrap it older, but Rob Brian Robson, obviously Gaza. Uh, I was very fortunate to play with them both, to be truthful. Uh, but they were my three main, 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 main people who I were looked up to was football and wise. I was a massive, I was a Buddha fan, used to go to all the games uh, when he was at Ayrson Park, uh, which was which was brilliant. We I mean, loved Ayrson Park. I mean, the other side's great, but Ayrson Park was absolutely brilliant as for atmosphere. Yeah, I still miss going to the old ground, like when he used to walk down the road and could either... Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it, is, it's it is, it's completely different now. I mean, Riverside's brilliant. I mean, it was probably what we needed, uh, especially when Robbo took over. Uh, but as I said, Ayrson Park, we've we done all our... As I said, when you when you join, you join the School of Excellence and you'd sign a YT. And if you look out, lucky enough, you'd get a year's pro with it. Uh, obviously, I signed the YT, but as soon, as soon as you turn 17, you could turn pro. So I was only I was only YTS for, for six months. Lot of lads were for two years, but them days of twenty nine fifty and playing in boots and stuff like that was absolutely quality. It was really really good. As I said, you, you don't really appreciate it until you think about now. About we, we were just having a laugh. All the lads who were in a little WhatsApp group, the lads who were there, they like Nicky Pev, Michael Oliver, Mike Barron, uh, Craig uh, Lids was there for a little bit. We're all in a little uh, little little group, and we were on about that the other day. The yeah, some park days, which was, was great fun. Yeah. Can you remember the first game that you went to then, sort of growing up? Like uh, oh, God, when I was a kid. I'll tell you what game, I, what, I can tell you what game do, does that stick out. I went to the, the middle of the Newcastle game when we needed to beat Newcastle. Ian Baird scored it, actually, I think. And we needed to beat Newcastle to steal. Uh, that, and that's one game that does stick out because it was unbelievable. The atmosphere was unreal and the game was fantastic. And I remember being in bed, uh, Scott Atwick, and he kept us up. Now, that's one game that does stick in my mind. Obviously, the the uh, cup games, yeah. uh, when they got the Zenith Data Cup final. I remember them ones as well. They were great games. Well, all games at Ayrton Park then 
Well, well, because because just not getting it, the atmosphere was was fantastic as well. Yeah, I think um, that that game. I'm sure was that the Newcastle game. Was that the one where they were trying to get promoted or something? We it was like a promotion relegation thing, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I think it was. I think I think they need the they beat us to go up or something. And I know I know we we need to beat them still. And it was it was it was unbelievable game. And being bad was quality that day. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'm sure it was four one that game. If, it, if it's the same one, I'm thinking. Of. Uh, yeah, I think it is. It was four one, wasn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what was the? When did you sort of hear of Middlesbrough's interest then in sort of new interview? Uh, well, I, I, uh, they, they were always in from a very young age, but obviously they they weren't allowed. Like most clubs you went, they weren't allowed to, to, to go anywhere near until you were fifteen. Uh, so, in them days. You used to go on trial if you were. I mean, I went all over. I went to Man United, I went to Liverpool, Coventry, even to Aston Villa. I went all over, absolutely all over. Just for when you were 14, that, that was the way to... You can't, can't do it now because you've, you've got to live within an hour of, of the training ground. So until they're, I think, over 14, I think it is. There's a fee after that. But even now, so even some of the kids now is Man United are interested. I couldn't go to them because the, you've got to be within an hour from the training ground where they then days you just go and live live there. Uh, so I, it was about I was around 13, there was massive interest in, even when I was really young. Uh, but we we done the rounds like not, like most of the lads we done the rounds going to different places uh, on trial and stuff. Uh, but I signed I think it was when I was 15, I think it was 15 with Ron Bourne, signed 15, uh, right yes. I think it was two years white yes and two years pro, which was unheard of then, really, because you normally just do your white yes and then look for your first two years off. You were once you got to seventeen in the fancy, but I made my debut when I was seventeen. You see, so uh, it was it went quite quick. Like that, then white yes days. I was only done it for six months, obviously, but I, was, I, I think about as soon as I turned seventeen, I think about hundred days later, I was oh, I played against Watford and made my debut for the Borough. So, uh, but yeah, around about fifth. 13 interested in 15 was when I signed my forms uh, with the brother. Yeah, so, you, so what, what age were you when you signed your pro deal? Was it about 17 then? Pro deal, yes. I, I'd already signed it when I was 15. So uh, I, I signed two years white yes. Sorry, one year's white yes and two years pro. Uh, but I only ended up doing six months white yes because you couldn't turn pro then until you were 17. Yeah. Uh, so, but as soon as I'm a 17th birthday, I just, I, they just scrapped the other six months. And I went straight to uh, two years pro, and I think I signed. I think another six months later, I signed another contract, another four-year contract after that as well. So, but then I've obviously Lenny Lawrence gave me my debut, uh, and then the following year, Robbo come, and that was the year we moved from uh, Essen Park to the other side. Yeah. So how did the uh, negotiations go then? Was it sort of easy to, <laughs> to sign the contract? Then I was like, oh, I want this and I want that. No, I mean, well, it was. It's quite I'm saying. I mean, these there's, there's kids now signing contracts now at 17 on 100 grand a week. You know what I mean, it, it was it's got it, it's complete opposite now than it was then. I mean, most of the most of the lads who signed, uh, white yes, everyone was on if the first year white yeses were getting 29 and 50, and I think the second year ones I think got 36 quid, I think something like that. And I think the majority of the lads who signed pro they were in and around the same amount of money. I think that's kind of what it was now. Might have been three fifty a week, something like that. For when you was two and seventeen, and that was the norm. There was no much difference between the lads who would send pro, sign pros as white yeses. They were on in between two fifty and three fifty a week. Then, obviously, once you stub yourself in the first team, and you, obviously your contracts went up there by then. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, these kids now, man, what the underground a week minimum. Some of them are Harland and Jaden Sancho. I know. You get like the seventeen, eighteen year olds now driving money, bloody. Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, they get they earn, they earn that much money. Is absolutely, it's frightening how much money they're earning now. It is absolutely frightening. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you made your debut at 17, you said. Can you remember much about the day and the, the occasion? What was it like? Yeah, yeah. Like? Uh, uh, I, I remember Lenny Lenny got us in. Because actually, as a white, yes, I used to clean Lenny Lawrence's boots. <laughs> Lenny's and uh, Willie Faulkner's. So they were, they were my two people. I was a white, yes, all those boots I cleaned. Uh, I just remember Lenny getting me in. I mean, I, I was already featuring for the reserves really, at 15 years old. I mean, it was quite often that they would pick me up in the in the coach from Keldorm School in Berwick Hills. So the middle of the coach with the, with, with the reserves on, people like Mark Proctor was coming towards the end of his career, uh, people like, like all the old school people. 
but I obviously I was still at school. So I can always it used to the bus used to wait for me finishing and we used to travel to the away games. So I was quite a regular fixer, even at 15 in the reserves. Uh and then I just remember Lenny getting me in and said, Look, you're playing. And I played in midfield. I think it was me, Robbie Must. We actually got beat so actually, but it was me, yeah, was Robbie Musto. I'm certain Andy Peak played as well. I'm almost certain. My dad just quit, he got me in and said, Look, you're playing, simple as that. And it was great. It was, it, was, it was live on BBC as well. It was live on BBC TV. Uh, but it was it was great. Obviously, it's fantastic to make your debut, especially for your hometown club. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was Bill. Yeah, yeah. Was that Watford away then? Was that Watford away? Yeah, After yeah we got beat. Know, certainly yeah, we got beat two 0 uh, But I remember, I always remember it was on it was on even on ITV. I'm, I think it was on BBC the show, but it was all, I think it was on BBC TV. I remember it was live. Uh, we started off all right. Remember the game? We started off okay. They hit us on the counter, I think. Uh, and that was it. We huffed and puffed, I think, that day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so in total, I think, was it about eight or nine years he had at Middlesbrough then? Yeah, uh, I was there nine, I mean, right. nearly ten. Nine, nine and a half. I left halfway through the mean, mean, tenth year from Middlesbrough. Uh, Side for Hearts. Absolutely loved it up there. Loved a great, absolutely fantastic football club. That club is absolutely really, really, really good football club. You know, we were getting, still now, they're getting 17,000, 20,000 every eight. They're, 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 they're a big club up there, Hearts. Yeah. There's Hearts, obviously, Rangers, obviously, it's Rangers, sort of Glasgow. And you've got Hearts and Hibs in Edinburgh. But it, it, they're a fantastic football club, Hearts. Yeah. So when, when you were at Middlesbrough, just before you left, um, who would you say, like, you worked under Lenny Lawrence, Brian Robson, Terry Venables, people like that? Did you work under Steve McLaren as well? Was he? Yeah, yeah, I played. I played. I played yeah. for every, every manager who was there where I was. I played for. I played under them all. Uh, obviously, Lenny Fest, Robbo, Terry Venables, uh, Steve McLaren. Uh, played for them all. Uh, I, I would. Venables was 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 fantastic for us. It was really really good. Brian was a fantastic man manager. He's best out of a lot of them. Robbo, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, but the best coach, even though he saw was Steve McLaren. Steve McLaren was probably the best coach I've coached, been coached under. He was fantastic. Uh, he was chocolate. He used to love himself, but uh, but he was a fantastic coach. Uh, manager, if, if he'd have had Rob Rose man management skills, he'd, have probably, he'd probably be the top draw. But he's just, he, 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 you would either in his favour or you weren't. There was no in between with him. Uh, and sometimes the lads who, he, who were in his favour, like I, I didn't play for him for six months, but I still had three and a half years left. Uh, and all of a sudden, six months later, he, said, he, he had me in his team. Do you know what I mean? And he was making yeah. me train with the with the reserves for a bit, and, and that, that that was his bit of his problem. He's done that to quite a few lads who were there. Uh, but he was a fantastic coach. I'll never take that away from him. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. What would you say was the most memorable game that you played in then? Uh, like the FA Cup final. FA Cup final was yeah. obviously representing my own town club in an FA Cup final, even though we got beat. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. All my family there, 80 odd thousand at the old Wembley as well, which was yeah. unbelievable. That was the best occasion by a mile. Just the, all the run up to it, the songs and the, the things, all the interviews and stuff you were doing, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the, I remember the video was, uh, it was quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, blimey. If I've had a pound for him, if someone said that to me, I'd be multi multied. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, obviously, when you were in the sort of borough team, I don't remember a particular goal you scored, I think it was against Man City. It was, uh, oh, yeah. Around about the time we were getting Janino on, and, and people were like, oh, we need Janino, and you've got Phil Stamp and all that, you know what I mean? Quality goal last Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think King Clatchy scored a similar one, didn't he, in the same game? Yeah, I think and he got goal, And he got goal of the month, the man was better. Uh, but yeah, we as I said, that yeah, it was a, it was a good goal. We, we played, I think we won 4 1, didn't we? That day, I think we won 4 1. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just before we signed, obviously, the little fella. Uh, but uh, but once we signed him, blimey, what a player he was! He was unbelievable when he was festive. The first time he come, second time he come, he had that bad injury for Madrid. Yeah, uh, he, he was he was still real, but he just wasn't that same electrifying. Kid who, who was who was here when he was when he was first there because when he was first, you couldn't get anywhere near him. He was that he was that good, but that that injury, even though he was still real, it did slow him down a little bit. And it, and it did, and you can you could physically see that his acceleration away from players was a little bit slower than it was when he was first here. Yeah, yeah, I think he was only about 20, 21, 22 or something when he first came over. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was fantastic. I mean, he, he was he was he got for a player of the tournament to me for Brazil. And, 
just the aura around him when he came, it was the same as when we signed Rav. It was like, you, were, you weren't just signing for you, you were signing superstars. I mean, there were, I mean, Rav's coming, Rav come with about 10 bodyguards with him and all sorts. It was absolutely mental. Like, we'd gone from signing actually hardly anybody then to signing people like Janino, Raffinelli, Emerson. And I said, the, the full town, it went, it went berserk. I always remember, because my dad had, my dad had the, we used to have the market tavern in, in, in the forums with uh, well, over 20 years. Uh, and just, I always remember the home games, I was popping after the game and going to see him, and it was absolutely berserk. Just the amount of people who were outside and Brazil tops on and all sorts. It was just a different time than, than, it, than it is now, completely different. And to be honest, I don't think we'll, we'll probably see them times for maybe even again, not in my lifetime anyway. I know. Yeah, I was one of them who had the, uh, the Janinho or Borat in Brazil scarf. <laughs> Brazil strap, yeah. I haven't mean, seen the same foot, but the, it was just. It was quality going the games. The stadiums were completely utterly full, and it, I know, I know we got we got relegated. I don't know how, like, but I know we got relegated. But even the, even when we got beat, people were happy, were still happy. You know what I mean? Because we were getting beat four three and having a right go. A bit like Newcastle when they nearly won the league. But that was a similar sort of thing. We were a big gung ho, attacking wise. We were fantastic. Just defensively, we struggled a little bit. Maybe if, we, if we'd have had big Hugo and uh, and Gareth. Maybe uh, we, we'd have probably stayed up then. Uh, when in fact, we probably definitely would have done. But as I said, it was fantastic. When, when Robbo was in charge, it was fantastic. Yeah, I, th- I think we had a, a good team then, obviously. Great going forward. And we did have some really good defenders, to be honest. Yeah, we were fantastic. We, were, and... we just didn't have the but we just didn't have the balance at, at the back. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't so much the defenders were bad. It's just that when, when we did attack, we, we, there was about six or seven was going forward every single and we, we, we're leaving them a little bit I mean you see now teams like Manchester City do the same but they all they've got every single major team now has always got a, a midfield player that's sitting constantly most of them have two of them now most of them have two of them and, and the rest of them have a licence to go forward uh, but just we didn't really have that uh, until a little bit later on uh, and that was probably our downfall to be truthful we were a bit too gung-ho yeah like I say, yeah, we were really good going forward. I always remember one of the games as well. It was uh, when we played Man United away, 3 all. Yeah, 3 all. yeah. In the ball where I think it was Hicken that scored the header. Yeah, he scored, yeah. Yeah, I think we were sure we were 3-1 up that game. 3-1 up, yeah. I think, I think uh, Scolzi scored, I think Scolzi equalised. I mean, yeah. I mean, they had a proper side then as well. I mean, I, cause I can remember cause I actually played in that game myself. And I can just remember looking at the clock at Old Trafford, it said 74 minutes. I still think we were 3-1 up this after 74 and I just find you knew when you just say, as I said, I said to myself, this is going to be a long 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, yeah, they got back to 3 3. But we we done really well against United for a few years, even even with that unbelievable side they had. We've done really well against them. And we had a, we had a bit of a voodoo. Hamilton Ricard had a bit of a voodoo on uh, Saul Campbell. He used to do really, really scored. I think he scored two twice against them in, in the same season. Uh, but we, as, as I said, we, as I said, we were a bit gung ho, but. We're, we're good to watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, yeah, Ricard, he used to have the better and better of Arsenal quite a few times. Yeah, I remember he made sort of a few. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, Hamill was, he, was a, he was a good player, Hamill. Great player. Good goal scorer. He's a bit, bit, bit uh, underrated, to be truthful. I know, yeah. I mean, he was a big, strong unit, wasn't he? Yeah, big yeah, boy. He was yeah. a big, big boy, yeah. Uh, good lad as well. Good lad. Great lad, Hamill. <laughs> What do you uh, remember about this goal? Yeah, finish here, he's gone all the way! Oh! What a goal from Phil Stepp, the 19-year-old! Is that the Man City one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was the Man City, yeah. Just remember going... Just remember picking it up and going through. Uh, I'm saying it was on my left foot as well. Uh, and I just, went through, just getting the ball and going through, it was too quick for them. Uh, and left foot, a little slot into the side, I think. As I said, I, I'm certain King Class has got a quite similar one in the same game. Uh, but yeah, it was obviously scoring, scoring at the uh, Riverside was brilliant, especially at, 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 especially at a younger age as well. Yeah, I think that was the first season at the Riverside as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. I think that was when it was when Robbo had, had first come. Yeah, I think that was the first season as well. Yeah, so um, when you moved over to Scotland then, obviously you went to play for Hearts. What was the mm-hmm. experience like playing in sort of in a different league and especially one that yeah, was... Yeah, I mean, it could get to... Yeah, it was, I mean... I'd, I'd gone up there previously and had a look about it. I, I could have signed for Millwall originally. I went, this is about a year earlier. And I, I went to Millwall and to be fair, they offered me very, very good money as well. And uh, 
I think they offered 1.1 million to the club for me at the time. And I went there on loan. And I was uh, with, it was me. Tim Cahill was there. Stephen Reed, Warren, yeah. the goalkeeper. Uh, I took this this two of us was there. The uh, what's his name? The manager of Burnley at the moment. Oh, Sean Dyche. John Dyche was there as well. He was the centre half, and I went. They were great lads. It was if I just did not like London at all. Just couldn't see myself. And they offered me a four-year contract. I just couldn't see myself living in London. And I stayed there. It was there. I tell you when it was. It was the time of nine eleven because I was staying in Canary Wharf, and obviously nine eleven happened, and we all got evacuated because we were they were expecting London to be the next one. So we got evacuated. You always, you always remember where you were nine eleven. I was on loan at Millwall and staying in Canary Wharf. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I, I done uh, yeah. I done a month's loan to come back, and I, and I just come back and said I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, so I stayed, I stayed at the border for, and I actually played with Steve actually after that when I come back uh, for quite a bit. Uh, and then had to come in. I remember Craig, Craig Levine and uh, used to coming down to see, looking at our training ground, uh, and there was me, Dean Windass, who were doing a bit of extra training. I think we were anyway. They must have got to said I was available. Uh, my contract was up uh, the following end of the season. So they asked me up and I went up and I absolutely loved it. I loved Edinburgh. Loved it. The, the club was fantastic and ended up signing for them. And we done really well. I mean, it was at the time, the, the Scottish League then was quite strong. I mean, the, the, the Celtic side, as was John Hartson, was Neil Lennon, Sutton, Henrik Larsson, Bobo Baldi. I mean, that, that was, a, they got the last 16 of the Champions League, I think they did. They had, it was Rangers and Celtic at that time very, very, very strong. Very, very, way stronger than they are now. Way stronger. Uh, and we, while I was there, I was there for four years. We finished third every year. We got into the UEFA Cup every year. We did really, really well one year. We beat Basel away. We beat Bordeaux uh, away. And we got the last, we got, we got to the last 16 of the UEFA Cup. We, we played Bordeaux. We beat them away 1-0. And we got beat 2-0 at home and knocked us out. We'd have played AC Milan in the last eight. But we, 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 we had a very good side. Not very many big names. Uh, the only, obviously, the main one was Craig Gordon. He was the goalkeeper. He's probably the best goal, young goalkeeper I've ever seen uh, as a young kid. And he was really young then, Craig. He was only 18. I mean, he was back there now, Craig, and he was only 18. And he obviously went to Sunderland in the end. Didn't, done well, but he had, he had a bad injury at the time. But he was retired for two years. Uh, but he was outstanding, really good. But we had, we had a really, really good set of lads at that hearts then. And we've done exceptional. I mean, a couple of them went down to Leicester. Obviously, the gaffer went, uh, Craig Levine went to Leicester for a bit. Didn't work out for him. But Scotland was Bill Hart. If ever anyone asks me about uh, any clubs at that, Hart would be the one straight away. I recommend 20,000 every week. Very, very loyal fans. Absolutely. Even to this day now, any time I've got Edinburgh, absolutely. I'm like, God, uh, it's obviously because of the goal I scored against their main rivals in the last minute. Uh, but as I said, on social media, they're, they're nothing but nice to you, and it, it is a fantastic family football club. Hearts. Yeah. So, what was it like then scoring that goal in the? It was the last uh, against Tom. Uh, so yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, well, obviously, I've been involved with that. Some stabbies for the Borough of Newcastle, some of them beating them. And you, when you obviously when you go to a, a different club and you, you don't really realize the the how how big it is up, up there for Hearts and Hibs. I mean, I do now. I do, definitely do now. I mean, absolutely. It's just it's it's like Rangers and Celtic go out and It's absolutely mental, uh, and and it, it, to make it more it, to make it more even better, it was like, it was obviously that we didn't play that well to start. We get beat one 0 We scored an equaliser in the think the eighty eighth minute, and then I scored in the ninety third. And I actually jumped over the Hordens into our away fans. I'd already been booked earlier on, yeah, and I got another yellow. So I got sent off for for celebrating with fans. So it, obviously that makes it even better now. And there's a lot of it. It says a lot of uh, fan, hearts fans on my social media, and a lot of them were young then. They're like, oh, like 19, 20, obviously, they think it's about 18 years ago. And how this that happened, and obviously, not all their memories. Oh, I remember jumping on the pitch and stuff like that. But it, as I said, hearts absolutely. I can go anywhere near Scott, anywhere the hearts part of Edinburgh. Uh, I don't have to ever buy a drink when I go up that place. Yeah, I bet you don't. Yeah, I'll play you the little clip here. This was the uh, the ball. Absolutely fair. Yeah, it was class. Yeah, and I think you see, you took your shirt off, you went in the crowd. It was great celebration. <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. It was absolutely quality. I mean, as I said, fantastic football club, hats. Fantastic. Yeah, 
Yeah, I bet it was well worth the red card as well because it won you the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I got, I got booked quite a few times for, for the heart, and uh, it was the only time that I never got fined off the football club for getting for a red card or a yellow card. So we used to have a fine system up there for bookings. And I never got a, I never got a fine for that one. That was the only one ever. Um, obviously, yeah. So and then you got sent off. I mean, but uh, like you say, you're on the game, so it, it doesn't really matter, does it? it was, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the like you know like the one most common sort of misconception or myth that um, the public or reporters have about professional footballers? Something that maybe does it maybe? Uh, obviously, they all think well, they're more loaded. As I said, I said social media's changed, and it, social media wasn't really about when when I was playing. Uh, it's the misconception then then I, I don't think there was much one now now it's completely totally different i mean it, the, the the living footballers now are living in a in a in a glass house now everybody knows i mean some of them have, 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 have to blame themselves to be to, for some of the stuff they put on to be true for but as i said the, the, the players now are in the public eye 24 hours a day social media dem- demands that i think most of the fans demand that as well uh, if it was about when I was playing, I'd have probably got into some arguments on social media. It'd be too far. Because yeah. if if I was if it was about when I was there, because some of the stuff what's put on now, uh, I don't, whether they see it or not, I don't know. But it's, some of it's, it is it is it's, it's mad. It, and it, it's I, I don't think I'd have enjoyed it. Like, that if social media was about then. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd have enjoyed it because it was a bit it was a bit more privacy there. And there's, there's no, there's none now. Absolutely nothing now at all. You can't do anything at all. And you'll get, you'll get found out no matter what you do. Uh, this day and age now. Yeah, no, it's a totally different game now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's completely. Yeah. Um, so in your career, then was uh, was it a team that you always dreamt of playing for? Uh, Liverpool. If, if if it wasn't Middlesbrough, I'd play for Liverpool. I used to love Liverpool, and, and there was in the eighties, Dalglish, Rush, uh, and uh, yeah, definitely. And I, I was very, very, even though we got absolute smashed at Anfield, I actually scored scored against Liverpool as well. We got beat five one, uh, but that that was a that was a personal uh, nice thing to do. Even though we got absolute battered, I think Robbie Fowler got a hat trick, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that was on a personal note. The score against. I was a massive Borough fan, but I was also a huge Liverpool fan. I used to love them as a as a young kid, and that was a, on a personal that was brilliant for me. Yeah, it was, I think that was uh, the game where Robbie Fowler scored for him. Sure, he scored for him that game. And did he get four? Yeah, I know he scored yeah, three. Yeah, he, he scored three. Absolutely... Yeah, he didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Robbie was a great finisher. Robbie, fantastic finisher. Yeah. Um, so, who would you say was your um, favourite midfield partner then? Yeah. Midfield part, well, I used to love Robbie Musto. I mean, I still speak, still speak to Robbie. I got when well, he was in New York for quite a bit, and I, and I do go to New York quite often. Uh, and I met up with him a few times on there. So he's currently uh, head of ESPN now, doing all their sports. Robbie, it's fantastic. I still love, obviously, obviously to play with Gaza, but Gaza wasn't the same player as he was. We all know when he was with England and stuff. It wasn't, and it, obviously Gaza was an absolute legend, one of the probably the best British football for a long, long, long time. Uh, but he wasn't the same type of player. Robbie Musto was so underrated, so underrated. Robbie, fantastic professional, great footballer as well. Uh, the, I always remember. I always remember Robert when Robbo. Robbo used to join in the in the five sides. He was the best player on the pitch, including including when Janino was on. Robbo, and he was forty year old. I had a love to have played with a, with a gaffer from when he was 22, 23, 24, he must have been some player because in five sides, at the, at the, at the uh, with Airworth, uh, at 40 years old, he was the best player on the pitch by a long mile. And he was very, very, he, the most whinging people of all time was Brian Robson. He used to moan. The, the young kids didn't used to like coming over when you were an odd number to make the numbers up. The young kids ain't coming over because they, they knew they'd get a, an absolute, uh, they'd fall off the gaffer. Him and Paul Ince, in people have the misconception of Ince. Ince outside of football, he's an absolute legend of a bloke, quality fella. But on that, and it's no, it's no, no, just it's no thing like that. They've both played for Manchester United, both under Fergie, and that they were that demanding. And, that, and that's the way they were. They were, they were born winners. But I just love playing with Robbie. But Robbo was must have been some player in when he was in the mid twenties. He 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 would have bust, He'd have been worth absolute. 
four tunes now, playing now. Yeah, when he was at his peak at Man United and then obviously playing for the England and the World Cups and things like that. He was honestly, when he used to train with us, he'd be like, ah, oh, blimey. I can imagine, imagine playing you again with you when you were 25. Was there ever a player that you ever sort of played with, or you know, that might have been one of the academies and you all started, you'd, you'd go on to make it as a top player? Yeah, Carlos Marinelli, by a long way, most talented young kid I've ever seen. Just, I just don't, and he, and he not just didn't make it with us, he, he had unbelievable ability, that lad. Um, but I'm on about above anybody, a bit like the uh, what's the lad who he, he actually couldn't was to me with the lad who was at Man United, who Fergie used to love, and he signed for the bullet to me, he was at the bullet for a bit. Uh, midfield player, can't remember his name now. Yeah. The, all the all all the X-Men United players say he was, he was absolutely brilliant. I'm saying he was played for the Bullet for a bit, but he was the same Carlos Carlos Marinelli, exactly exactly the same. So much ability, it was absolute frightening. But for somehow I don't, he just he just never fulfilled his, his full potential. Carlos never ever even that, even when he left us, he, he never. Uh, but he had some ability and yeah. unbelievable ability. Yeah, you could see it in certain games when he did it. Yeah, he technically, he was technically, technically out of this world. It's just, it just never clicked. It's just, he it just never. No one could find the right, the right thing for him. He's a very, very moody little boy. Like, he, he didn't like being told what to do. That maybe his problem, his attitude, probably. Uh, but as as ability, raw ability, unbelievable. So when you were playing then, what was the one thing that you sort of know now that you wish you'd known sort of back when you were playing? Uh, I mean, we were in it. We were in it. It's like, a, like when I started playing, we were in a bit. It was starting to change football then, so that you, so your people like were your robbers and gazers and people like that. It, it, we had, it was like a half and half. It was like you, you not power to a party lifestyle, but going out on a on a Saturday night, or if you didn't have a game during the week on a Tuesday. They were all doing it, you know what I mean? And we, the was younger little lads who were in, I know, a 20s, early 20s. You, you, you mainly, we were our side with the others, with, a, with that type of side, where you look back at it now, and it wasn't, and it's genuinely looking at it now. They don't, very, very rarely you see any professional footballers drink now. They eat correctly, they don't drink. The, the lifestyle they live is, is, is a, as a pure athlete, and they are pure athletes now. The when then do you mean it was just starting to change that 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 that, that time was just that when Wenger come in diet start, started to change, and the mentality of of yeah you were a footballer you, you you went as a footballer but you were an athlete and these guys now you can see now most of them are body fats of six percent eight percent max, and then it was quite acceptable to have twelve to fourteen percent you 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 wouldn't you'd be fined now for that. Uh, and that's the thing. What's ch- it's changed for the better because you're seeing these lads now that absolutely unbelievably yeah. athletes, yeah. uh, fitness-wise. Then, but as I said, that's 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 that was the transition. And some of us, some of like people who were my age, was, was stuck on that either side of it. 